Hello everyone, welcome again. Well, in this video, we are going to discuss about Phantom JS. Phantom JS stands for Phantom JavaScript. It is an scripted headless browser used for web automation. So when I say headless, that means there will be no UI for this browser. Unlike we have the UI for Firefox, Chrome and IE. So whatever the action provided by Phantom JS will be done in the form of background process or a daemon process. So in the UI, you will not see anything just like we used to see when we launched the Firefox, Chrome or IE browser for testing. So Phantom JS use JavaScript APIs for interacting with the web page. So whatever the actions such as opening the web page, clicking on link, clicking on button, these all action are done in the form of JavaScript API. Now in order to set up the Phantom JS on the local system, again we are going to take the help of new get package manager. So just like we install the driver for Chrome and I, we need to install the driver for Phantom JS. So inside my project, I will do a right click and select manage new get packages. Now here, I am going to search for Phantom JS. and I'm going to install this driver. So when I do the installation, it is going to add the Phantom driver exe in our project and also add certain references to our project. So as you can see here, we have phantomjs.exe which is a driver file for phantomjs. Now after this, I'm going to make a couple of modifications inside our framework. So first of all, I need to add a browser type. So inside our browser type enum, I will add phantom.js. Now inside the base class, I will create one more static method. So private static. And this method is going to give me the driver for phantom.js. So phantom.js driver get phantom js driver so just like we created private static method for individual driver similarly i have created one more static method for getting the phantom js driver and inside this i am going to use the phantom js driver class so just like we use firefox driver for firefox chrome driver for chrome IE driver for IE. Similarly, in order to use the Phantom JS headless browser, I'm going to use Phantom JS driver. So if I go to the class definition of Phantom JS driver, it inherit from remote web driver. And if I go inside the remote web driver, it inherit from the iWeb driver interface. In other words, I can say that Phantom JS driver indirectly inherit from iWeb driver interface. So here I will create the driver for phantom.js equal to new phantom.js driver and I'm going to return this driver. So as I told you, indirectly the phantom.js driver class also implement the iWeb driver interface. So here, this is perfectly valid object repository dot driver equal to get phantom.js driver. Okay. And here I'm going to add a case. So case browser type dot phantom JS. So when user specify the phantom JS driver inside the app config, so I'm going to instantiate our driver property using the get phantom JS driver method. And after that break. Now once this is done, inside the app config, I will specify the browser type as phantom.js now after this I'm going to create a directory inside our test script. Let me call it as 
phantom js inside this i will create a class called test phantom js so i need to make this class as public and the attribute which i need to use with this class is test class inside this i will create a public method so public void test phantom js driver and inside this i am going to perform the same set of steps which i used to do for the other browser so from drop down list i am going to copy these lines where i am opening the bugzilla page clicking on file a bug providing the username password and login in and as i told you everything will be done in the form of a d1 process so we will not able to see any interaction in the ui so for that i am going to add a method for taking the screenshot for after every action so after this i am going to call generic helper dot take screenshot so after opening the bugzilla web page it is going to take the screenshot similarly after clicking on file a bug again it will take the screenshot so in this manner i will know that whether we are performing the action in the right manner after supplying the username again i will take the screenshot then after password and after logging in i i will again take this screenshot and after clicking on the test ng link again i will take this screenshot and we need to use the test method with this method so again i will build my solution put a debug point over here and run this script in a debug mode So as you can see here it has started the phantom js driver which is going to launch the phantom js headless browser Okay, let me rerun the test case. I think I run the test page navigation, so I need to run this. So, yeah, so I will run it in debug mode. So again, as you can see here, it has launched the Phantom JS driver, which is going to launch the Phantom JS headless browser. and as you can see here we have hit the debug point but other than driver we don't have any browser but in the background process actually the headless headless browser is launched so i will navigate to the bugzilla web page after that i will take the screenshot after that i will click on file a bug link and again i will take the screenshot so after every action i am going to take the screenshot to make sure that we are doing the action in a right manner i will supply the username password and take the screenshot then i will click on login button and again take the screenshot and click on test ng link and take the screenshot and continue with the execution so as you can see here we have performed all the action but there was no browser at the ui means all the action happened in the form of javascript api calls in the daemon process now in order in order to make sure that everything went well 
I will go to the location where I have my solution inside Selenium WebDriver and then debug. So as you can see here, these are the screenshot which we just took. So if I open this one, so as you can see here, this is the Bugzilla main page. And the reason why it is coming like this is because we didn't maximize the browser. Then after that, we click on file a bug link. So this is the login page. After that, we provided the username, password, then click on login button and then click on test engineering. So as you can see here, all the interaction happen in the memory in the form of D1 process. So Phantom JS is very powerful browser when you want to do a unit testing on your web page. In this case, you will not see any interaction on the UI, but everything will be happen in daemon or in background process. And just like other browser, Phantom JS also has certain option by which we can modify it. So we are going to discuss that thing in our next video. So in this manner, you can set up the Phantom JS and run a test script inside the Phantom JS headless browser. So that's all for this video and thanks for watching.